Um, all you need to know is what's in the homework. So if uh, going through the homework, if you feel like you understood everything there, then fine, you're good. You don't have to worry too much about other things that are in the chat chapter that's not covered in homework. So let me just quickly go through, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me just quickly go through homework uh, kind of um, for the matching and multiple answer questions, um, the, giving some brief explanation for the correct answer. Um, so this is the question about the material property. And I actually got this question a little bit earlier from someone. Um, so the kind of criteria you want to be thinking about is if this applies to all the materials that uh, under this. Like sometimes the example that came to me in the question was clay. So you are used to thinking of clay as a solid and you think, oh, clay can uh, take on the shape of the container. So doesn't this apply to solids? Then what I would ask you to do is think about do all the solid objects, are all the solid objects able to do that? Then you have plenty of counter examples. So this doesn't apply to solid. The taking on the shape of the container only applies to liquids and gases. Okay. So, so that, that's the question I want you to ask when it says uh, takes on the size of the container um, or uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe this was the only one where there was that possible ambiguity. But the question you're asking is, can all the objects that are categorized under these phases do that? So retains its own shape and size, that should be solid. Uh, I think that can carry a sound wave. This is an interesting one. I think uh, all these materials can do that. All these materials can carry uh, vibration, especially sound waves, uh, vibration, the, the um, I guess it's a longitudinal wave uh, that can be carried by everything, um, even liquids and uh, gases. So E, E is included as fluids. Uh, that's the kind of shorthand for liquids and gases, things that flow. Text on the size of container, that's gas. Uh, liquids, the property of liquid is that it, um, it, it's still the, Atoms and molecules in the liquids to interact enough with each other that they uh, are kind of attracted to each other. So they don't arbitrarily go far away from each other, which gases do, um, or atoms and molecules in gas does. And which is uh, the reason for the last one, that should be solids and liquids. They are still significantly attracted to nearby uh, things. So that should be correct. Let me, okay, five minutes. Uh, uh, this one, uh, you know, you should read this for liquid and gas properties. I'll just show you the correct answer. And I don't think there's a, a, like a big explanation. It's a kind of matter of knowing, um, knowing the facts about them. Uh, there's a, a very derisive comment made by someone named Rutherford who said, uh, science is either all physics or stamp collecting. And <laughs> so it, you know, when it's a matter of a question of knowing a fact or not, then there isn't much that I need to explain. <laughs> so I think, uh, um, I think, yeah. So here, knowing this, it's a matter of having read through these sections and uh, remembering those properties. So let me not spend too much time with the explanation. Unless there are questions, I'm happy to answer questions. But if there aren't, let me not waste the time. No, I would have to, I still have to read the, the yeah, yeah. chapters. I'm again. doing this also for the benefit of people who might be watching this on recording. Right, and right. For the people who are here in real time. Uh, so it's so much below. Density, is a, it's a mass per volume. So I'm gonna uh, answer based on that. So there's the definition, which is uh, this. And then that leads to uh, other properties, which is that it's a surprising thing is it's a property of substance. and like when you have some amount of steel, then the density of steel is uh, same no matter how much steel you have. Uh, hardness, that's something else, yeah. All right, uh, density of water. Oh, this, uh, I included this as an interesting historical fact. So the answer to the first part, it's one, um, because that's how we define the gram. The, the unit of gram was defined using density of water. Uh, gram is uh, how much mass of water there is in a cubic centimeter of uh, water. Uh, so uh, basically, this is a, let me leave that to you as a unit conversion exercise. 
that's the correct answer. Um, you should do the unit conversion exercise for yourself. Uh, pressure, it's force per area. And um, so, you know, force per area, the mathematical uh, formula for that is, sorry, I'm bringing my annotation to, so pressure is force per area. And I guess good expression to kind of have memorized or know is a force is pressure times area. So they are mathematically equivalent. And so I had one choice that relate to one of them. And I think there's a choice that relate to the other one. Um, so, well, uh, let's see. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Ah, I guess. So I, need, I guess I didn't really need to use the other one. So large force applied, large force applied over small area produces large pressure. Um, I thought there would be more. Um, so a couple more questions. This is multiple choice. Um, you can figure out what the correct answer is. Um, multiple choice. Oh, yeah. Um, this one, it's meant to be a tutorial, so I think it's good for me to just leave people to do this on their own. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's, uh, um, yeah, it's meant to be written as a tutorial, so I should, well, have just people go through that. So yeah, so that's all the chapter eight material.